Hey Athletic Cup Series fans, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a racetrack that are just like in my Athletic Cup Series races. Now keep in mind these tracks aren't the best looking tracks, but they are cheap, affordable, and easy, somewhat easy to make. So please follow along to these steps. I got a couple things that you will need to buy for these, but in the long run they will not be that expensive. And they're easy to make, um, easy to stack up, put away and then boom you got a racetrack so uh, stay tuned and I will show you the tutorial hey everybody we'll, we will be making Nazareth Speedway a track that is no longer around um, you can look it up it's like a jungle now but I'm gonna be bringing it back for the 1999 series and possible possibly Athletic Cup Series races so here's just kind of what it looked like from above Looks very cool. I believe it's got five turns, so that should be fun to make. So when you are making a racetrack, you definitely want to have some sort of straight edge around. I'm going to be using my grandstand as my straight edge. Always want to have some cars on hand um, so you can kind of feel the racing groove um, where the cars will be running on the track. And also you need a pen or sharpie. Um, I usually go with sharpie because it's easier to see when you are lining the track. And... Right now I will show you what you need for your racetrack for the walls. So um, right now this is what I use for the base of my wall. This right here you can get at any home improvement store like Home Depot, Menards, Lowe's, all old NASCAR sponsors. So you can go support them and buy some of that. The name for it is Radius Window and door foam seal tape and this is half inch by a quarter inch okay half inch by a quarter inch so if you want to make a track you want to get well, okay first you want to get some cardboard um, I'm not too sure where you can get cardboard at because I get it from my workplace um, I probably should have came prepared for this but I get my cardboard at work because I work at a factory so cardboard is very uh, accessible to get and it's free for me so but this, I believe you can get cardboard at the Home Depot. So look for, um, I mean, you can get any size, size of cardboard. Uh, I have to look up what size is probably decent. But this size is probably good for a track like Nazareth. Here's Riverhead. That's what the dimensions kind of look like. You can see there. And then, but this is what I'm going to be using for Nazareth. It's a little shorter, um, long ways, but it's a little wider. The width is um, a little wider. So this is what you need for the base of the walls and then this is what I use to you got to hot glue this it's double sided foam tape so in theory it should stick to this but it doesn't so you got to get a hot glue gun and hot glue this on to the walls so this is what okay so you can see here there's that foam seal tape and then here's that double sided foam tape and uh, the hot glue does event, um, sometimes come off so you got to repair looks like I got to make a repair there but for the most part, it does a good job and stays on like at my Riverhead racetrack. So I'm going to draw the dimensions and then we can apply the foam tape. Okay, so I got the outline done. You can sort of see this blue line right there. That's what I got throughout the track for my outer wall. So Nazareth, Nazareth is a little bit different looking racetrack. You got five turns. Um, right up in here is there's a little kink. I might have to kind of adjust when I'm laying the tape down. When you do your outline, you do not really have to go uh, just base your taping off of that. But I want to do a little bit of taping on camera. So we're going to do the outer wall right now. Um, and then we can focus with these race cars, kind of focus on what you got room for with the groove. I usually try and make it um, three wide. So how about we break out some 1999 race cars here for a quick second. So show you, just kind of make it nice and neat here. Um, so let's set off Keselowski and Bowman to the side for now. Um, usually I, I try to go for three wide on my racetracks. I don't do a whole lot of three wide racing action. Um, basically because it's generally unrealistic unless you're on a restart. 
or um, get wadded up. So I think three wide is generally the basic rule of thumb for width of your racetrack. Um, definitely, if you feel the need to, go four wide. It's just totally up to you. It's just how I basically structure my racetracks. So when you lay the tape down, you want to make it as neat and straight as possible. So start way at the back here. And when you're doing the back stretch, to maximize uh, space for your track, try and keep it as close to the edge of the cardboard as you can. And usually if you tug on the tape, you can um, get a little bit more use out of the tape. Make sure you smooth it down, just make sure it sticks. And with this um, black foam tape, I always go, go double the use. And so Nazareth's corners are round and turn, I think this would be turn three, but I think uh, off of turn four there's a little kink. So if you can see over here where I'm working. And just uh, peel this white tape off. And so to make it a permanent stick, press down on it. So right here, there's kind of a little kink. And so I kind of drew that wrong. So we're going to fix that here. Make it about right here. And then there's another kink. And just try and make it as straight as you can. As we stretch our tape out here. And at Nazareth, the start finish line is somewhere right in here. And so that's how you do the black tape. Remember, just try to make it as straight as you can. And round in the turns. And you are looking good. Okay, so I went ahead and did the rough sketch. Trust me, this is a rough sketch of where the grass would be at Nazareth and um, the front stretch. So Nazareth has a unique kind of layout. They got a patch of grass in between uh, the runoff. For some reason, they have a runoff also above up here. Uh, I, I'm sure it's for some reason, uh, or maybe it's just to look cool, I guess. But then they have a patch of grass, like the infield grass. So they have a um, they have the infield grass and a patch of grass that kind of runs along the whole front straightaway, and then it kind of separates the turns from where cars enter back onto the track. On the back stretch here, you're going to have a solid wall right here. So really, on the inside, the only solid walls you'll have is right around here, and maybe um, leave like a patch. I'll probably leave like a patch opening right here for. Uh, entrance like the garage area or something so right down here here's your pit lane um, and then all around down the back stretch open track but a wall right here this is not a wall this is where um, the cars and you'll see this one it's all painted and looks all pretty and whatnot so it's yeah, just a little rough outline on how I make my racetracks here um, always got to have the hard wall on the outside and then um, you kind of just do whatever on the inside. You see what you got to make here. And for some reason, my Mark Martin's tire is... No, nope, there we go. It was stuck. But some reason, now it's not. All right. All right. So now that we have um, double banded the foam tape, uh, double stacked. Now, now that we have that done, you do not want to add the white walls yet. Do not add the white walls yet. Um, unless you don't want to paint the track, but I, I want to paint this track, so I'm going to paint it um, gray for the pavement and the asphalt, and then um, green for the grass, of course. So, uh, obviously take your, track, or your cars off the track, and then you can start painting away. And so I'm going to show you just a little bit how I um, use strategies to paint. I do not um, use tape. To paint, uh, I have a decently steady hand. Um, some people like to tape off, like they would tape off um, like a straight line here and paint the grass, and then like paint tape a straight line there and then paint the asphalt. But I'm gonna use um, here. I'll show you. I use whiteout strips, 
And when the track is completely dry, because uh, it will not work, I use a whiteout strip and I go over, like, um, kind of straighten out, make it look all neat and such. So, I suggest, I'm just lazy, I'll be honest, I, 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 but I suggest that you should use some tape and whatnot, and then obviously have two different kind of brushes, one a little bit smaller so you can kind of uh, get close to the edges here, and then one the thicker one where you can kind of just paint, uh, speed paint, that's what I like to call it, I guess. Um, so we're going to go into the Bob Ross hour here, and we are going to paint the racetrack. So let's start with probably green. So let's start with green. And what I do is sometimes I get like a paper plate and I'll pal it out. But every once in a while if you just squeeze ever so lightly. Don't put too much in one area. Kind of just add some drops. And then kind of just go from there. So grab your... And make sure you have a cup of water too. So kind of just paint it out here. Some nice little strokes going on there. Yeah, the track. Definitely popping with this green. Um, kind of go like this once you get close to the edge. I usually do about two coats of paint. So when this one dries, I'll add another. And the thing with cardboard, though, the, the part that is uh, frustrating is that when you paint it, it tends to bow. So... Um, lately, I've been using rocks, but um, when you put grandstands on the track, that, that often helps it uh, kind of like weigh the track down a little bit so it doesn't bow. Um, hockey pucks, if you have any hockey pucks, those are good use too. Um, I don't really keep it too professional over on my channel. I, I, I probably should um, in hindsight, but you know, sometimes when you're just in a stop motion mood, you want to get that race started right away. Um, yeah, so, and then another quality of mine I guess I have is that I kind of have a steady hand. So I automatically, of course I screw up. I mean, I'm nowhere close to perfect, but I can kind of freehand stuff and get away with it. I know not everybody is like that. Um, but yeah, I can, I can kind of freehand stuff. And if you just have a steady hand, you can get the lines you want. See, I'm getting, uh, actually this is not bad. I was kind of worried about doing this on camera. I would probably screw up or something. Um, but you just kind of kind of paint over your rough sketches there. Kind of make them straight as you can. Um, but yeah, definitely probably going to have to do another coat. But right there is the grass on the front stretch. Um, this, this one's going to be a little tricky because in between here you have some pavement that we're going to have to work out here. And then another patch of grass right in here. So it, it's, it's going to be... A little bit tricky, but we're going to do our best. Um, probably going to have to double coat where the line is, especially, because I'm kind of using less paint in that section. But I'm going to leave everyone there. I'm going to update here and there as I go along on this update of the track. I hope everybody is enjoying this, um, taking good notes, trying to make... Um, like I said, I don't have fancy racetracks like... Uh, the Coke Zero Cup Series, or the Under Armour Cup Series, even Double E, uh, I don't have as fancy as tracks as he does, but I, cardboard has always kind of been my my gimmick, so that's why I kind of use, I tend to lean towards cardboard, and it's for one, it's free for me, uh, I get it at work, so that's also another plus to go to cardboard route, but also, uh, this is just a cheap track, cheap track, get cardboard. I don't believe it's that expensive, but if you want to go all out, get a nice track, plywood is where you go. Plywood is a nice track. Have your dad. If you're old enough, you can do it by yourself, but if you're young, uh, inspiring, inspiring, try to be a stop motion YouTuber, have your dad help you out, have your mom help you out, grandpa, whoever um, takes care of you, whoever likes to help you do this kind of stuff, whoever supports you, and uh, just have fun with it. Um, that's what I've been doing. Ever since the get-go, my dad's been a big help. My mom even built me a track. So, um, just from the get-go, have support that's big. And then, if you have some money, I, I would say get plywood. Because it definitely makes the tracks look better. But also, it is so much easier to um, store cardboard. There's all the cardboard tracks. And we'll have them standing up right there. They don't tend to bend or bow like that. 
And then uh, I'm going to be adding this one to the collection here pretty soon. So uh, I will probably see you guys when it's all painted. And then I'll show you how I use the hot glue gun. But that's kind of common sense. But just in case, I will show you how I do that as well. But once again, uh, paint very lightly. I recommend getting some of that blue paint tape and making a straight line. So uh, just, if, if, just like if, in case you're not a very talented painter. I would go that route, but I would say if you're good at freehanding, I would try it out because it's a lot quicker, uh, gets the job done, and you can use um, whiteout tape for any places, like you can use it for the white line to like divide the grass in the track, so it makes it look really cool. So I, I appreciate you all watching at this point. I hope you have gotten some good information from this, and we will see this track when it is done. Okay, so the grass has been painted. I have a couple of screw-ups. I'm not too worried about it just yet. I got one right there because um, I still got the gray to paint the asphalt. Uh, so I'm not too worried. I got a couple of screw-ups up there. Once again, not too worried because I have a chance to redeem myself with the gray paint. Um, so we will get to that point here shortly. Okay, so I have finished painting the racetrack. It looks pretty good. Um, I think it's ready to dry and then we can add the um, white out strips you can get these at staples or this was specifically from staples you can get them really anywhere um, definitely from Walmart it'd probably be the cheaper route. I think you can get them from the dollar store too if you have one of those around nearby so we are gonna be letting this track dry you definitely want to make sure it is completely dry because it will be a pain in the butt to add these white strips and then um, after I do the white strips, we will add the white walls and be ready to print off some logos. And our racetrack will be done and ready to race at. Okay, so all the lines have been drawn onto the racetrack. Now once you complete that task of whatever track you decide to draw, now you can um, make... Uh, the rumble strips if there happen to be any on this track and usually I use sharpie but today I'm deciding to use paint trying something new and so far you can see on the rumble strip right there it doesn't look too bad with paint so far so how I usually do the rumble strips is I take about three strokes per line just kind of judge where the white should be and you just go down get some more paint there just like that. There's your rumble strip. So usually three lines per strip. One, two, three. Again. One, two, three. Now not every track will have rumble strips, obviously, but um, Nazareth happens to have rumble strips on this particular track. And part of the straightaway, or part of the turn. Um, but usually, after I get the lines done, the track is done. All you, all that's left to do is to print out any logos that you want for your racetrack. And this should be about the end of the rumble strips as well, because the cars will come in through this turn, and then. It's not very well done on my half, but right here is a straight part. Um, this is like turn five right here. Then you got your straightaway. And there's some rumble strips up there in turn one. And this is technically only turn two, but I'm going to call that turn two and three. And then turn four, and then turn five. Just to have like a little fun meaning to a racetrack. It's got five turns instead of four and whatnot. So, yeah, just about I'm just about done with this racetrack. Hope everybody kind of followed along with this tutorial. Usually the main thing a lot of people ask me is how I make my walls, so you're probably not even watching right now. But yeah, for the walls, you just buy that foam stuff from a home improvement store. And then you just get to making your racetrack and having fun. I, I, I enjoy making racetracks. It's a lot of fun. I do have a couple more things to add to Nazareth. Nazareth. I'd like to add the uh, bridge that's over by turn two. And then they got a little tower in the middle of the track that would be fun to add um, for the track for that purpose. Obviously those would have to be like taped down because you can't just 
Um, you really can't have those because they would uh, break when you store your tracks. So they can't be permanently on the racetrack. So I hope everybody kind of enjoyed this tutorial. I'll show you the finished product when it's all said and done. But yeah, up to there, just that's how I do my Rumble Strips now. Do them better than I used to. And that's basically how I make a racetrack for the Affleck Cup Series. Thanks for watching. Hey, so I did forget about the walls to add the white part. And I also, I was not really satisfied with the width of the track on the straightaways. The back straightaway looks fine. But I wasn't happy about the width of the, like the turns and the straightaways. So I went ahead and added another line. Of course, this is going to use up more of this precious material. Um, didn't really want to have to do that, but I think it looks a lot better now that it's a little more narrower. Um, Nazareth was obviously not that wide of a racetrack. Um, very flat turns, narrow racetrack. So I figured I, I should probably change that. It does look a little more narrower. I'm glad I did that. And of course, now we have to add um, to glue on the white wall. So I will show you how I do that. It's pretty simple. What you need is a hot glue gun and then um, that foam. You can see it right there. You need that foam. And so I will show you how I do that real quick. It's pretty simple, pretty easy. And then you can see the finished product. Okay, so time to apply the double-sided foam tape walls. So when I do this, I do not peel this part of the tape. Okay, so leave that tape on there because uh, you don't want the sticky part obviously to be there. So you want this sticky part to go on the foam. But as you're going to see, it sticks, but it comes off so easily. So you have to get a hot glue gun, have your mom or dad do this, and if you're old enough, do it yourself. Um, but definitely have your mom and dad help you uh, apply the walls onto the trap because this glue is very, very hot. So what I usually do is I don't apply it to here. I necessarily apply it to um, the black foam. So let's start it off. Get a good spot right there. And so I wanted to start over here because the walls are really messed up. Um, okay, wow, that is hot. Okay, so you run along here. Oh man, it's already coming off. This is a disaster. Okay. And what I do is I usually kind of like leave a trail. So the big, as you can see, I have a trail set out because that thing is will weigh it down and pull it like I think it already has. Because I wanted to start this so there wouldn't be a huge lump. So let's apply more glue to the very beginning. And then run along here. Okay. So as you can see, there is the first um, piece of the wall set up. Looks decent. And then here's another tricky part right here. So trying to make this look as smooth as possible will definitely be a challenge. So you kind of want to stretch it out just a tad. Lay some glue right there. And I can kind of get away with this because Nathras kind of has um, very weird turns. Alright, so right there the hard part is over with. Maybe I can bow this a little bit better. Okay. So that is really how I apply the walls to the tracks. Um, it will be the same thing all the way around, um, if you can guess that much. I wanted to show this part because this part would be tricky. If you do 
mess up like I did, make the track way too wide. And so this is just my attempt to make the track narrower. And I think it turned out decent. We'll see it um, in the finished product. So just apply your walls. Make sure you do the inside walls as well. And then we will see you when I'm done with this. All right, the walls have been added. The track looks pretty good. I won't say great, but it looks it looks decent. I'm very happy with the way it turned out. And that is how I make my racetracks, everyone. So I hope everyone enjoyed this video. I will be adding the sponsors and um, the bridge and the tower, the scoring tower, um, shortly here. That will take a while to make. But yeah, this is how I make my racetracks. Hope everybody enjoyed. This is what they turn out like. And I hope you can make tracks that are cheap and affordable like mine. Thank you.